ready for its first official flight. The United States Marine Corps Boeing Vertol CH-46A Sea Knight arrives at the Boeing Company's Vertol Division Flight Test Center. It is outfitted with special test equipment denoted by the international orange paint. High-ranking Marine Corps officers along with more than 300 military personnel stand by awaiting the new twin turbine helicopters demonstration. A display of capabilities these aircraft soon will be bringing to the fleet. Ground equipment necessary for starting most helicopters is not needed with the Sea Knight. The auxiliary power plant located in the aft pylon is all that is required to start the engines. The mere press of a cockpit switch by the pilot activates the auxiliary power plant and this unit in turn then starts almost simultaneously both of the main power plants. Electrical and hydraulic power is then provided for operations of all systems. On the takeoff apron, the Sea Knight lifts up into a hover, readying for its demonstration of sideward and rearward flight. Designed to operate in the fleet with a normal gross weight of 18,700 pounds and an alternate gross weight of 21,400 pounds, the Sea Knight is powered by two General Electric T-58 shaft turbine engines, each with a military rating of 1,250 horsepower. Payload capacity for a 100 nautical mile radius mission is 17 combat equipped troops or 4,000 pounds of cargo. As many as 25 combat equipped troops can be carried at the alternate gross weight. Vertical takeoffs with twin engine reliability are now completely feasible, permitting takeoffs from confined areas. The Sea Knight demonstrates not only this feasibility, but the ease with which such takeoffs can be executed. Should the pilot lose an engine while in vertical ascent, he can make a vertical descent back into the confined area or continue as he does now by trading altitude for air speed. Now a combat situation is simulated. The crew has ventured out on a mission. They are returning with litter patients. When with over 50 miles remaining between them and the ship, one engine is rendered inoperative. As the one engine goes out, the second engine is now automatically increased to full power. The pilot has reduced the airspeed to 90 knots and here continues home on one engine. The Sea Knight now puts both engines into play and flies by at its twin engine cruising speed for best range, 130 knots. Production models of this helicopter will be equipped with a foreign particle separator. This system is being designed to remove a large percentage of the particles that enter the engine air inlet with the induction air. The Sea Knight continues its spiral descent while the rear door is automatically opened, able to be opened while in flight. This ramp makes it possible for the helicopter to carry loads that are longer than its cargo compartment. This feature also permits offloading of equipment while in a hover. This versatile aircraft can land and taxi to its shutdown point with the ramp open. Equipment and supplies can be offloaded easily by using a taxi drop technique as the aircraft moves over the ground. Here the Sea Knight taxis to its shutdown position, which is a simulated LPH class carrier elevator. Individual tow operated hydraulic brakes for the main wheels bring the aircraft to a smooth and sure stop. The Sea Knight's powerful rotor brake brings the rotors to a halt in five seconds. These aircraft also will be outfitted with power blade folding operable in winds up to 45 knots. Consistent with the advanced performance and capability of the Sea Knight, Maintainability is equally advanced in both concept and practice. 
In the initial design of this aircraft, emphasis was placed on ease of maintenance and accessibility. Using this accessibility, two flight test mechanics prepare the helicopter for static display. Cowlings on both the fore and aft pylon are quickly opened for inspection, and spectators are invited out to view this addition to the marine inventory of weapons. High-ranking marine officers appear pleased as they take this opportunity for a first-hand inspection of the assault transport. Following this display, the Sea Knight resumed its exhaustive test program pointing toward fleet acceptance. This new medium assault transport helicopter will have as its primary mission the rapid dispersal of combat troops and equipment. It will normally be carrier-based, ready for instant swift dispatch to beachheads or to any landing areas where the fighting is thickest. In March of 1963, the CH-46A tried its sea legs for the first time aboard the LPH-3, the USS Okinawa, while it was underway down the Delaware River from the Philadelphia Navy Yard. In an informal compatibility test, the Sea Knight made 14 touch-and-go landings on the Okinawa, one of the Navy's newest assault carriers. This was a sort of get-acquainted meeting for the two, so the ship's company could familiarize themselves with the Sea Knight's flight characteristics, as well as its deck handling and tie-down features. The helicopter, in turn, got its first feel of a carrier deck, soon to be its natural habitat. The Okinawa's 10 landing spots for its current helicopters are indicated by the white circles. The Sea Knight landed on each spot at least once, seeking out any which may have operational peculiarities or hazards. However, the ship and the helicopter proved to be compatible right from the start. Worthy of note as it takes off is the virtually level fuselage attitude, a characteristic of this tandem helicopter. The Okinawa is one of a new class of carriers designed specifically to carry helicopters for marine vertical assault operations and has no arresting gear, barriers or other provisions for fixed wing aircraft. Deck spotting studies show that it can accommodate as many as 21 sea knights on its hangar deck and seven on its flight deck. Aboard also are accommodations for a reinforced battalion landing team of marines, fully combat equipped. Later this year, the Sea Knight will undergo its official carrier qualification tests as part of the Navy Bureau of Inspection and Survey trials. In early 1964, the first operational aircraft is programmed to join the fleet. The final milestone will follow later that year when the first operational squadron will be complete. HMM-265 at the Marine Corps Air Facility, New River, North Carolina. The Sea Knight will then be on full duty an integral part of the fleet marine force.